What makes your dad happy? Hugs and kisses from me that I love him. His family, uh, Jesus. Um, well, bowling, I think that would help. What makes your dad sad? Um, if I don't obey him. When I splash all the water around. What is your dad's favorite thing to do? Go to Starbucks. Play pillow fights. If we go like somewhere special like Disneyland or something. How old is your dad? Um, three, five, sixty-eight. <laughs> How tall is your dad? Well, I'll go with like eight foot twelve or something. <laughs> um, twenty inches. What does your dad do for a job? My dad's a police officer. He protects people. He works hard so that way we can get money to buy toys for our birthday. What do you and your dad do together? Sometimes we would have like a date together. We fight and wrestle. Snuggle when it's nighttime. What's your dad really good at? Lego Star Wars. Cooking. Tickling me. Cause he's like so good I can almost throw up. In what ways are your dad and God the same? My dad and God um, love me and they're perfect. God helps um, me make the right choices and Daddy helps me make the right choices sometimes too. Because he gives me a warning. How do you know that your dad loves you? He tells me. It's because he's been with me all my days and um, he's never left me. Sometimes he hugs me and kisses me and sometimes he says it to me. He's um, honest with me. He's, um, well, I can tell that he really loves me. I love you, Daddy. Happy Father Day. Hey, Colorado Church, I am so glad to be with you once again. I'm actually standing in the balcony of our Miracle Building, and we are closing on this building, meaning that we're actually purchasing it, taking ownership of it on Friday, the 25th of June. And I want to invite you to come and celebrate that with me. On that very evening, we had already scheduled Food Truck Friday right here in our Miracle Building. Invite whoever you want to. Uh, make your way here at 6 p.m. for a full service, full kids church, and then afterwards we'll hang out and we've got uh, food from a taco food truck and food from a chicken finger food truck. There's gonna be more than enough and it'll be a good time. And I am looking forward to just hanging out with you in the midst of a miracle. Come on now. So once we get ownership of this building, there are lots of things that have to happen. I was just talking to somebody here in the building about some of our plans and our ideas about what we want to do. We want to update and refresh this building. Some of you guys have been in it and it's such a gift. It's so spacious, but you know there's a lot of work that needs to get done. I want to say thank you to those of you who showed up at our Saturday serve day. Man, you guys killed it. We had so many people. We got through so many of our projects, but now we're uh, getting ready to hand that over to a professional contractor who's going to walk us through a longer remodeling process. And then uh, you guys need to know this building comes with four tenants that we're going to have to sort of work our way around. And I really want to build a dynamic and powerful kids ministry. I want, I want the kids to show up to this building and know that we've been intentional and they have their own space that they can't wait to get back to every single weekend. And so we're going to do 
all of what we can to be ready to have a grand opening in the fall. I'm so super excited. Between now and then, some of your small groups are gonna start to gather here. Some of the Sunday school classes are gonna start to gather here and so keep your ears open for opportunities to do that and then also uh we've been doing live sermon recordings that's now a small group that you can participate in um and then i have a small group that meets at my house every saturday evening love to have you join that jump in when you can share a meal with me and my family um and join us for that so hey we've been framing this season of our church with the story of Nehemiah. It's just the perfect story to just put the framework around our season about how we're gonna come in and rebuild and restore this church for the glory of God. Just rejuvenate the kingdom of God in this area. We've already started that, but I want to read to you the passage of scripture that we've sort of been working our way through, and that's Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Early the following spring, in the month of Nisan, during the 20th year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was serving the king his wine. I had never before appeared sad in his presence, so the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be deeply troubled. Then I was terrified, but I replied, Long live the king! How can I not be sad? For the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins, and the gates have been destroyed by fire. The king asked, Well, how can I help you? With a prayer to the God of heaven, I replied, If it please the king, and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. I pulled out of that passage a a list of six sentences, and I've repeated them to you over the last few weeks. And so let me just read those six sentences once again. Make it your ambition to please the king. Nehemiah did that, and it positioned him to be sent. Make it your ambition to be sent. We talked about that last week, and we talked about how Philip, the disciple of Jesus, was such a great example, just like Nehemiah, of someone who was sent. uh, Philip's story actually was one where he was sent after he baptized the Ethiopian. Philip just poof, disappeared. He was sort of teleported to another region in the nation. And we talked about the process of Philip's heart and his willingness to serve that positioned himself to be sent completely uh, by the Lord. And and today we're going to talk about this third sentence. Make it your ambition to discover your purpose. The next sentences that we'll hit later on is make it your ambition to be a rebuilder. Nehemiah went to Judah, went to Jerusalem with the intention of rebuilding. Number five, make it your ambition to have a city mindset. Nehemiah didn't go to Jerusalem just to build stone walls. He went there to restore and redeem a city. So what you and I are doing in this building, when we restore it, when we revive it, when we show up here and worship the Lord in this place, it's not about a church. It's not about paint or new chairs or a remodel process. It's about being a light for Jesus in this city. I believe that we're going to strengthen the kingdom of God in this city simply by showing up and being intentional with our relationship with the Lord. And then the last one, make it your ambition to leave a legacy. So let's talk about that third sentence and spend the majority of our time on this today. Make it your ambition to discover your purpose. You know, so many people wander through their life without really ever discovering their purpose. We, you and I can identify with this when we look at young people. Maybe it's somebody who's deciding if they should go to college or not, or somebody who's just graduated uh, with a degree, but now they're sort of searching for a job. They, they're trying to decide what do they want to do with their life. And, and we sort of link purpose to occupation. And I think, I think we make a mistake when we limit our purpose into the category of occupation or of our 
job. I think we all need to discover the God-given purpose that is on our life like a calling. It's something that has anointing with it. It's something greater than just trying to show up to work on time. It's something that makes your heart beat and your spirit come alive. And when you know it, you know it and nobody can keep you from it. But before you know it, life can seem sort of boring and you're trudging from one thing to the next. You hop uh, from one occupation to another occupation and, and it's it starts to stagnate in your life. But once you find and discover your purpose, your heart will come alive. And if you connect that with God's purpose for your life, you'll never be the, the same. And I want you to discover your purpose. So uh, let's talk about what to do when you don't know what to do. Because I think there are a lot of us that don't know what our purpose is, and we were praying and we're asking God, we're asking uh, the opinion of our friends, uh, but we just don't know what to do. So what should you do when you don't know what to do? Uh, in that passage that I just read, Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, it says, Early the following spring in the month of Nisan, during the 20th year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was serving the king his wine. I had never before appeared sad in his presence. So the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be deeply troubled. So what should you do when you don't know what to do? When you're searching for your purpose, but you haven't yet discovered it, what should you do? You should be faithful and excellent in your current situation. Nehemiah was doing his job so well before he discovered his God-given purpose. And that positioned him to be sent by the king. Maintain a great attitude and positive perspective. If you, if you wake up every day and you decide, I'm going to do these things, I'm going to be faithful, I'm going to be excellent, I'm going to maintain a great attitude, and I'm going to have a positive perspective, doors will open up for you. All right, now, discovering your purpose, here's a couple of things that I want to talk to you about. Your purpose is connected to passion. If you're trying to discover your purpose, I want you to identify your passion. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 3 says this, I replied, long live the king. How can I not be sad? For the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire. See, Nehemiah was working his job and his, his brother and some of his friends had come back from Jerusalem. And chances are that Nehemiah had never even been to Jerusalem. And he just said, hey, tell me about Jerusalem. And Nehemiah's brother and their friends told the story of what they had just seen. They just said, the city's in, it's in ruins. The, the wall is torn down. The gates are burned. And it seems like his brother and, and their friends just sort of got back from their trip and sort of forgot about it. But Nehemiah, it agitated him. He, he was left unsettled for a long period of time. See, when you're trying to discover your purpose, it's, it's always connected to your passion. What agitates you that others seem to put up with? That's a question to ask yourself. What is it that sort of makes you almost angry and other people seem to pass by and it doesn't bother them at all. For me personally, and, and I'm standing in it right now, I, I drove past this church and churches like it. And every time I see a church that looks like it's in disrepair, a church that looks like there's not enough people coming to it and, and nobody really cares about it, man, it, it makes me mad. I'll, I'll stop and I'll drive through the parking lot. I'll pray for that church. I'll pray for the pastor. I'll ask God to send reinforcements. But it just, it just makes, me, it makes me mad when we live in such a great city and Denver's booming and bursting at the seams. And we got, we've got churches dotted all over the map of our city that are in disrepair. 
And, and there's something inside of me that says, I, I wish I could get in there and just preach to the people and get them fired up. I wish I could get in there and have a work day. I wish I could get in there and just convince somebody, hey, you, you just need to mow the lawn and slap some paint on the walls and, and just try a little bit harder. And so I know that that's something that agitates me and it connects me to my God-given purpose. And this is the second church in a decade that now God has, has graciously given me the opportunity to rebuild and restore and and give me a chance to see, man, maybe that's something that God has as a purpose for my life. What agitates you that others seem to put up with? What seems wrong that you want to make right? And what do you seem to think about that you wish you could change or improve? Nehemiah thought about that for a whole winter season. For a whole winter season, he thought about walls that were torn down and gates that were burned down. And he just wanted to get there and do something about it. Your purpose is connected to passion. Your purpose is also connected to your skill set. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 4, the king asked, well, how can I help you? Do you know how awesome of a question that is? That was the most powerful person in the whole known world at that time. And Nehemiah sort of vaguely conveyed a passion hidden deep in his heart. And he said, I'm sad and I'm troubled at the state of the city where my ancestors are buried. But because Nehemiah was faithful and excellent in his current situation, even before he knew what his purpose was, the king looked at him and he said, I could trust you to do whatever's on your heart. And the most powerful person in the world said, well, how can I help? Your purpose is connected to your skill set. What is it that the king sees in you? Follow me here. Nehemiah served wine to the king, and he did it so well that the king looked at him and thought, I could put you in charge of a city. Are you doing so well what you're currently responsible for that the king of kings and the Lord of lords goes, man, I got to give this guy some more responsibility. I got to give this girl another opportunity. Do what you do so well within your skill set that the king of kings looks at you and says, man, let's put you in charge of something. What does the king see in you? Your capabilities connect you to your calling. See, God's not going to ask you to do something that you're totally incapable of doing. It's going to be something that you're good at, and it's going to be something that you already lean into. What is it that you're interested in? That's a way to discover your purpose and ask the Lord, God, I have this skill. I'm better at this or that than my peers or uh, my, my community. And so what is it that you want me to do for the kingdom in that realm? When you have served the king faithfully, the king will willingly help you. Now, let me just sort of be your pastor here. If you haven't served the king well, then you got to start there. Don't try to discover your purpose if you haven't yet started to serve the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Wake up and read the Bible. Get his word inside of you. Turn on worship music whenever you can. And then be available for kingdom opportunities. When there's an opportunity to serve, raise your hand and say, I, I'm, your, I'm your guy. I'm your girl. Put me to work. I'll serve here. I'll serve there. Start doing that because when you serve the king faithfully, the king will willingly help you. I wrote this down, serve your way into your purpose. You can't just think about discovering your purpose. You can't think your way there. You've got to serve your way into your purpose. Serving is the pathway to discovering your purpose. Next point is this, your purpose is connected to your commission. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 is the great commission. And it says this, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. 
And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Your purpose will be found within the Great Commission. His purpose for you will always be in alignment with his plan. So if you think you've discovered your purpose, and, and like I said at the beginning, a lot of people confuse purpose with occupation. You've got an occupation, you've had a job, you might even call it a career by this time because you've put in a decade or two or three on this pathway. And let me tell you, just because you have an occupation, just because you have a career, doesn't mean that you've discovered your purpose. Your purpose is always going to be tethered into the Great Commission. If your job or your occupation or your career is not allowing you to make disciples, then that's not your purpose. Come on now, let me, pre let me preach at you. You might be driving in the car. You might be sitting on your couch. I'm going to get up in your business for a second. Just because you have a job doesn't mean that you have purpose because God's purpose for your life is always going to be tethered to the Great Commission. Now, your job might be uh, something that blesses you financially and it might put you in a good position, but that financial blessing should actually put you in a place where then you are able to propagate the gospel and make disciples, baptizing them. So not just like, hey, I was a good example today at work and, and maybe in four or five or six years, the person in the cubicle next to me will ask me, hey, you, you seem to be such a courteous person. Do you believe in Jesus? Come on now, let's, let's just back ourselves away from that sort of disciple-making, great commission-filling fulfilling idea because that's not getting that's not getting anybody saved that's not that's not rebuilding any cities we we got to wake up and go if my job is not allowing me to make disciples then my job is not my purpose and so I've got to discover a purpose greater than my occupation that actually allows me to align myself with the great commission and make disciples if you're not fulfilling the great commission you have not discovered your purpose. Man, I hope some of you guys are getting a little bit unsettled right here. Next point is this. Discover your purpose by serving alongside those who have discovered theirs. Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Let me, let me read this to you. I think it's just spectacular. This is Nehemiah. I said to them, he's now, he's now in Jerusalem, he's walked around the walls, and now he's gathered the leaders of Jerusalem. Listen to this, it's spectacular. I said to them, you know very well what trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me, and about my conversation with the king. They replied at once. This is, this is how the leaders re replied. They replied at once. Yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. Purpose is contagious. You're going to discover your purpose when you start serving alongside those who have discovered theirs. See, Nehemiah discovered his God-given purpose for his life. And he went to a city and he went to the leaders of that city who every single day walked by and walked over the rubble of their own walls. They walked potentially through gateways where the gates had been burned to the ground. They knew what they had been walking by and living near, but it was like they were almost blind to it. They were passionless to it. And then Nehemiah showed up and he said what? He said, let's end this disgrace. Would you get yourself around somebody who's like, let's end this disgrace for the glory of God. Let's rebuild this church. Let's remodel this sanctuary. Let's call people in this city to a life-giving relationship with Jesus because it's a disgrace 
to, to have a dot on the map that's not effective for the kingdom of God. Let's do it together, right? Nehemiah was so passionate about his purpose that it was contagious. And the people around him said, let's do it. Let's rebuild the wall. Next point is this. Your purpose will keep you and others from depression. Now, depression, it's, it's sort of a hot topic today. There's a lot of people that in this previous season have gone in and out of depression. They've battled with it, and it is something very serious and very severe for some people. And I'm telling you, we, we can mitigate those things through the appropriate medical channels, but I think there's also a way to battle depression in the spiritual realm, and that is by discovering our purpose. Your purpose will keep you and those around you from depression. Now, Nehemiah, in this story that, that some of you know really well, he gets in there and he rebuilds the wall. And when he rebuilds the wall, he restores and revives the city. So now, fast forward, we were reading in Nehemiah chapter 2 all throughout this message, and now we're going to jump over to the 8th chapter of Nehemiah. Verse 10 says this, And Nehemiah continued, Go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be de dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Some of you guys grew up with that verse on your uh, refrigerator or on your mirror or something like that. You've seen it on placards and you've seen it in stores at the mall. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You didn't know that it came in the context of this story about Nehemiah. See, the pathway of your purpose should finish with a party. So now I've got a, I've got a special announcement and I'm hiding it right in the middle of this message. So people who aren't watching this message, who aren't listening to this message, they, they're going to miss out. If you're watching this message, then what's going to happen on Friday, June 25th is we're going to close on this building and we're going to purchase this building. It's miraculous that a, that a mobile church plant that was setting up and tearing down in a middle school, got, went into this global pandemic, didn't have a place to even gather. And now we're coming out of the pandemic with a miraculous 19,000 square foot church building. I'm so excited and it makes me want to celebrate. And when they discovered their purpose and when they revived and rebuilt a city, Nehemiah said, hey, it's important for you and I to celebrate. We should eat good food and we should drink wine and we should get together and we should celebrate and we should give food to those who haven't been prepared. And so my sort of secret message hidden inside of this message is if, if you're watching this on Friday the 25th, we're going to close on this building. And then that night we're having a food truck Friday right here, a, a, a full service. And then we'll have dinner afterwards. And that dinner is free of charge to any of you guys who are watching. So when you get here on the 25th, walk up to that table and say, I watched, I watched Evan's, Evan's sermon and, and I get a free meal because this is a celebration. Okay, I can't wait to see you guys there. The pathway of your purpose should finish with a party. See, broken walls and burned gates are an open invitation to the enemy's attacks, right? The walls were torn down, the gates were burned down, and the enemy could come in. They could do and say whatever they wanted to. And some of us live our lives that way. Our spiritual walls are torn down. Our gates are burned down. And the enemy has free access into our heart and into our mind. There's things that, that uh, we allow to be spoken over ourselves. We have thoughts that aren't true. They're not the Jesus thoughts that he has for us. And we need to spiritually rebuild the walls and the spiritual gateways of our lives. Rebuilt walls and working gates were a cause for feasting and celebration. So come on, let's do it. We're getting a building Let's feast, let's celebrate, join me in that. All right, discover your purpose by planting yourself. I've got, I've got one interesting thought in this, uh, in this note here. Nehemiah, the 13th chapter, uh, it's towards the end of the book, and he's talking about a uh, certain circumstance, 
And, and he writes this in his story. He says, I was not in Jerusalem at the time, or at that time of what the event was, for I had returned to King Artaxerxes of Babylon in the 32nd year of his reign, though I later asked his permission to return. Now, here's, here's something for those of you guys who grew up uh, knowing this story about Nehemiah. Nehemiah, it, it, it's such a short book. It's this amazing epic story, and some of us know it so well. And we have the tendency to think that th these things happened so quick, so rapidly, and it causes us to say, man, I wish I could enact spiritual change in my life and in my heart and in my habits quickly, because sometimes the stories in the Bible seem like it just is like a, a, a snap of the fingers and the walls were rebuilt. But what we see in this verse is it puts, the, it puts a notch on the timeline. See, when Nehemiah was sent, it was the 20th year of the reign of King Artaxerxes. So Nehemiah, either he arrived in uh, Jerusalem either the 20th or the 21st year of the reign of King Artaxerxes. And it says that he went back to the king in the king's 32nd year. So, Evan, what does that mean? What are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you that Nehemiah was in Jerusalem for 12 years. Your purpose finds its power in the fulfillment of its season. I think we have to commit to being in a place, to serving well, until that task is complete. I think if we shorten our season, we end up shrinking our purpose. I think we want this sort of microwave Christianity. We want this quick fix. We want our problems all to go away. And, and you're, you're thinking, some of you guys, but Evan, it only took 52 days for Nehemiah to rebuild the wall. You know, I used to think that, and then I did some research on this, and I came to the understanding this wall was eight feet, eight feet thick, okay? There is a time slot in this story that says that this task was completed in 52 days. Do you know what that task was? That task was the, the rebuilding and the hanging and securing of all the gates of the city of Jerusalem. It took Nehemiah and his friends and that, the leaders, it took them 52 days to hang the gates. But it tells me that it took them somewhere between 10 and 12 years for them to accomplish this task. Can you believe that? I thought this whole time that it was instantaneous, that it was just a couple of months, really not even a full two months that Nehemiah served and worked and revived this city. He was faithful in his purpose to be there for 12 years. He went back, served the king, checked in with the king, and then actually put in another request to say, to the king, would you send me back to Jerusalem? My heart is there, my purpose is there, my people are there, and he returned. And even on his second return, he restored things. Discover your purpose by planting yourself. And then my last point, your purpose will require courage. Nehemiah chapter four, verse 17 it's a familiar verse here. The laborers carried on their work with one hand supporting their load and one hand holding a weapon. While they, while they worked, their enemies started to ridicule them. Their, their enemies started to threaten them. Their enemies tried to distract them. And so what Nehemiah did was he had, he had people that stood guard and people that worked. And he had people working with a trowel in one hand and a sword in the other hand. When you discover your purpose, it's it's going to be something that gets you excited and makes you even a little bit nervous because it's going to be bigger than yourself because your purpose will require courage. You know, the other day I, I went to my 12-year-old's baseball game and I, and I was on the phone that afternoon and, and uh, I, I was getting there just a little bit late and when I drove up I realized that the baseball game didn't have any umpires. And uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but... Uh, I was an umpire for more than 10 years in my life, and that was like two decades ago. And um, so I realized the coaches were going to try to umpire, but it was a playoff game. And, 
And eventually this, this young kid, he was probably 13 or 14 years old, he shows up in an umpire uniform, but he doesn't have any of his behind the plate gear on. And so he's just planning on being the second umpire in the field. And so Emily, my wife, volunteered me. And she, she said, why don't you go out there and umpire? And so in my shorts and t-shirt, I walked up and talked to the coaches. And I said, hey, I, I can help you guys out. And I put on the gear that they had. There was like a catcher's mask and a, and a uh, catcher's chest protector and then two shin guards. And, and I, I walked out there and, and uh, sort of squatted behind the catcher and started calling balls and strikes. I wish you were all there. It's sort of a different side of me that none of you guys have ever seen. But, you know, none of us would have gone out there and stood behind the catcher with a pitcher, a 12-year-old pitcher, throwing, throwing balls that are, that are skipping on the, on the ground and, and bouncing past us and the potential of me getting hit by a foul ball. I, I wouldn't have had the courage to, to place myself there if I didn't have the right equipment. And I think what we need to do is we need to go out into the God-given purpose in our life but we have to do it with the armor of God on ourselves. We need the helmet of salvation. We need the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. And we need our feet to be fitted with the gospel of peace because your purpose is going to agitate the enemy. He's going to try to get at you. But as we rebuild, we also defend because this is a worthy cause right? So in closing, I I just want to encourage you, join with me on the 25th of of June and celebrate this miracle that God has done in us and for us and positioning us for revival in this city. But I want to ask some of you who have yet to decide to give your life to Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to do that. Because maybe you've sort of been around Jesus. Maybe you would even consider yourself a Christian. There's a story in the Bible where uh, a woman who was desperate for the power of God in her life saw Jesus walking in the midst of a crowd and Jesus was headed to perform another miracle. And she, even though she shouldn't have been there, she, she snuck in and she thought, if I, could, if I could just grab the hem of his garment, Maybe that would change my life. And I think, I think the tendency sometimes is that we're sort of in this Jesus crowd. But maybe you haven't been desperate enough to reach in and, and reach out for the power of God that's available through Jesus Christ. Maybe some of you need to just commit to spending more time in the Bible. Maybe you need to wake up earlier, stay up later. Just get in the Bible. I love the Bible because what it does for me. If I I don't start my day with the Bible, I feel empty and agitated throughout the whole day. It's something that, it's, it's more than like a vitamin pack. It's more than just an energy drink. It's something that makes me come alive and I want that for you. Maybe it's time for you to step up and serve because you want to discover your purpose. And and serving is the pathway to purpose. I would love for you to join me on this journey, and we're going to have opportunities for you to jump in. Maybe that's the decision that you need to make. Let me pray for you as we close. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. God, we thank you for this building that we're standing in. We thank you for who you are. And God, right now I pray for those who are deciding to lean into Jesus, to press into Jesus, to reach out to Jesus. God, I pray that wherever they are, on their couch, in their car, walking along, listening to this with headphones. God, I just ask that for those who are desperate and those who are deciding, God, I I wanna discover my purpose and I wanna press in, I wanna go all in with you. God, I pray that you would respond by pouring your Holy Spirit upon them. God, meet us with your power. Meet us with your transformational power in our life. May we never be the same as we press into you. And God, for, for all of us, as, as we go throughout this week, God, as we open up the Bible, let it not just be ink on paper. Let it be living. Let it be active. Let it be food for our soul. Help each of us, God, to discover our purpose so that we can glorify you, so that we can rebuild a city and lift the name of Jesus high. 
God, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Love you guys. See you on Friday, Food Trick Friday.